So there's no limit to living large when you in Miami. So the mansion that I stayed at, the next guest, he was on Forbes top 1500. So he was there for the month coming up and he didn't even flinch at the six figure monthly price tag for the rental. I was there for a day, my accountant calling me, Jabril, what's up, what's going on? So there's levels to this life, even in the top 1%. And in Miami, some people really got it like that. And so I just wanna break down a few things real quick, right? So it takes about $32,000 a year on a world scale to be a part of the top 1% of income earners. I don't think a lot of people understand how blessed they are. For example, I'm talking about Miami, but I'm recording this in Bali, Indonesia right now, and minimum wage is $175 a month. So in the US, UK, um, to be a top 1% income earner, it's about $500,000 a year, right? So I just wanna give you a little bit of perspective. So as it relates to the top 1%, I'm near the bottom of the totem pole when you're talking about that class of people. Now I understand that I'm really blessed and I really have no complaints in life. And so there's a lot of things people say, man, I would never do that if I had money. And I say a lot of times is, once you get there, come back and talk to me, right? So for example, um, a lot of people say, oh man, I'd never have a clean, I'd always clean my house. But the thing is, it's not always the most effective use of time. Right? And then secondly, you're helping the economy, you're helping someone else have a job. And thirdly, if you don't enjoy it, I think this is one of the, the benefits of earning more money. You don't have to do things that you don't enjoy. And so that's my philosophy in life. If it ain't fun and I can afford to help someone else out and they can help me out in the process, I'm all about it. And to even go a little bit further, right? So it's like the guy that says, man, I'd never fly a girl out. I'd never do anything like that. But they're gonna get an Uber for her, you know, to arrive and go home. It's no difference, it's like some guys can literally do a flight in and out easier than some dudes can do the Uber, right? So it's all relative. And so that's one thing I've realized in life. And for me coming up, I've always been like, man, I'm so inspired by people who are able to do things, live a certain way, because there's a lot of good people doing amazing things, you know, making good money. So before I get to the cars, the mansion, I just wanna give you a little bit more perspective, right? And so I'm gonna break it down as simply as I can. So let's take, for example, someone who's making $40,000 a year. And so like, what does a $40 Uber to them feel like? What does a $1,500 Rolls Royce a day feel like to them compared to someone who's maybe making 1.2 million a year or someone who's making 4 million a year or someone crazy that's making like 40 million a year? I wanna break down a few different examples for you. So let's talk about someone making $1.2 million a year. And I hear these phrases all the time. Man, a million dollars ain't shit these days. I'm like, okay, let me show you what it can do, <laughs> right? So 1.2 a year, that's 30 times more than someone who's making 40,000 a year. So what does that feel like? So a $40 Uber to someone who's making 1.2, that feels like they spending a dollar 43 for that Uber ride. Or that $1,500 a day Rolls Royce rental, it feels like $50 a day to someone who's making 40,000 a year. And so that's the difference, right? And then you're like, man, if it felt like 50 bucks a day, I might actually treat myself and do that once in a while. Now let's talk about some crazy levels. So someone making 40 million a year, the Uber feels like four cents to someone who's making like 40,000 a year. And then the Rolls Royce $1,500 rental, it feels like a dollar 50. Now if something felt like a dollar 50 to you, you're probably gonna indulge in it, right? Cause it's not really a big thing and that's how people go. It's like buying a cup of coffee for someone who's making 40 mil and people in Miami got it like that. All right, enough about perspective. Let me talk about some of the fun stuff that I did. And so when I was down in Miami, I remember meeting uh, my guy Mark from Vomo, CEO. Um, when it comes to private jets, yachts, helicopters, anything luxurious, Mark is that guy. And so I met him through my homie Neo. And so I gave him a call and he's like, yo, if you need a jet, whatever, I can do it. But when you're down in Miami, let me connect you with my guys at Golden Yacht Charters. And so those are the people who took care of me down there. So when it came to the crib, you're gonna see the jet skis, the yacht, the car, they're the ones who hooked it up down there. And when you talk about what makes something a 1% experience, it's definitely the service. Because anyone can have a yacht or a car, but it's the service what separates you know, the top 1%. And so why were we doing all this crazy stuff? For me, it was a celebration. 
I was celebrating our first eight-figure year in business. And I didn't mean I get to keep eight million and put it in my account, but we did pretty well. And so I said, yo, let's go out and just enjoy for the day and relax. So that's why we were out celebrating life. So before I talk about the mansion, I want to talk about the cars. So with the full service, if you want to be driven around in the Maybach, if you want the Suburban, whatever it is that you have a driver on call. And then one of my favorite things is my, my dream car is a Rolls Royce Dawn. But when I look at the price tag, 400,000 plus, the way my bank account set up right now, I'm like, nah, that's gonna have to chill. But enjoying that for one day, I was like, I'm gonna do that. Because my, some of my favorite things, I love a convertible and I love a luxurious car. And so I feel like the Rolls Royce Dawn is that perfect example. And so when you talk about the smoothest car I've ever driven in my life, this is it. And then um, shout out to Chanel as well. So she was rolling around with the boy. I actually met her in, uh, in Oakland. And shout out to Morgan from Blavity. So I met her at Afrotech. And then also, shout out to Twitter. So I actually met her at a Twitter party with a whole bunch of dope black folks doing dope things in tech. And so she was in town. I was like, yo, come share with the boy. And so we were just rolling around, um, enjoying, went to the beach for a little bit. And so I'm telling you, the kind of looks that you get when you was in that Rolls Royce, I was like, man, I can't lie, man. I kind of dig at this. So one ride I enjoy as much as the Rolls Royce is the Can-Am. Man, this thing is so much fun. When you talk about I feel like a big ass kid on this thing, real talk. And so when I was down there, I couldn't find anyone that rented one. And so I actually ended up buying it. So this is actually my personal Can-Am. And so if you in Miami, you want to rent it, Holla at my guys, and so you'll see the info right here. So after a little cruising in the Rolls Royce, man, it's time to get back to the house. And you can have more than enough fun without even leaving the house. They got everything. They got the video games in the crib, personal chef on call, and then you got the view, just everything to enjoy life, and you know, all it has to offer. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. It was so inspirational being in the crib, because it's not how I live every day when I'm in the United States. And then so one thing I always hear, man, this is not how the 1% lives. This is not how the wealthy live. Man, Warren Buffett still lives in the same house that he did like 40 years ago, which you don't know about his five other houses, the private jet that he has, or man, Zuck, man, he doesn't wear a Gucci belt, but like the $100 million crib that he's got in Hawaii, all these different things, man. And I, and I get the perspective, but trust me, people are out here living. They buying these big ass yachts. And so I think it's just like, it's, it's really a misconception. But yes, are there some people that don't spend money? Yes, but there's a lot of people with a lot of money that enjoy life. So for me, I'm not obsessed with money. I just love to live life to the fullest and the experiences that I can have in it. You know, this is a short time um, on this earth. And growing up, and I always hear things like from my family, like money is the root of all evil. And I'd have all these negative um, associations with money. And as I got older, I was like, yeah, there's some fucked up people with money, but there's also some really good people with money. And that's what really enabled me to just also just love doing the things and not feeling bad for doing it. Anyways, back to the video, right? One of the funnest experiences in the crib, or actually in the back of the crib, was the jet skis. I've probably done about 30 different jet skis in my life, and this was the fastest jet ski I've ever rode in my life. And one of the coolest things is, is when I was actually going slow, we were just cruising around on the jet ski, real smooth, real player-like, and just seeing some of the homes that I definitely can't afford. And it was just like a real majestic feeling cruising around in Miami, I'm telling you. Because this is some of the things, you don't even have to be rich, right, to you know run a jet ski and cruise around Miami for a couple hours. So after coming off the water, you know, we were a little bit hungry, and so came back in the crib and chef put it down. When you talk about presentation, I was like, yo, this food just look expensive. I was like, I almost didn't want to eat it. So, you know, we trying all these different foods and the food tasted as good as it looks. And then to wind down after the food, I was like, yo, let's hit the hot tub, man. I feel it's not a Lux crib until you got the hot tub. Anyone that knows me knows how much I love a good jacuzzi. And so, you know, we're just sitting by the hot tub talking about life and what it can really do for you. And, um, you know, a couple glasses of rosé, 
had the nice Harlem candle out there. So if you don't know anything about Lux candles, shout out to my homegirl Terry. She has some of the best candles in the world. And you know, it's a tribute all to the Harlem Renaissance. And also, not just me, Alicia Keys, Misty Copeland, so many people love these candles. So after a few glasses of wine, the driver was like, yo, you want me to drive you to dinner? I was like, no. We actually got a captain that comes with the house. So you have a yacht that's available that's just parked in the back. And so I said, yo, let's cruise on the boat, you know, under the stars and go to dinner. They're like, yo, you the boat, we gonna make it happen. And so we called one of the dopest restaurants in Miami. So we didn't even go and eat in the restaurant. I didn't want to do that, you know, whole COVID and everything. So I said, literally, we picked up the food on the dock and then we just ate and cruised back to the crib. When you talk about one of the flyest player vibes that you can have, pull up to the dock, I was like, yo, I can't afford to do this every day right now, but it's definitely in my visual vac, man. It was just one of the dopest experiences, you know, that I've ever had in my life, man. It was just humbling. You know, especially where I come from, you know, my mom's never made more than 26 grand a year. And so just to experience things like this, it, it just was, it's just different, man. It was just so humbling. And, um, you know, we're gonna keep getting it and we're gonna keep living it. So I'm not like Drizzy yet, private villas only. I don't go near a resort. <laughs> I'm not at those levels yet. So one of the things I do, I like to indulge in five-star hotels, right? When I don't want to spend five grand a day for an experience like this, um, one of my favorite hotels in Miami is the St. Regis Bell Harbor. Man, this place is incredible. Right on the water, amazing rooms, amazing service. And then I feel good there. Like I said, I'm not drizzy yet, right? I'm not on uh, Forbes top 1500. And so this is another option if you're looking. So like I said, this is not how I live every day. So I live in Miami, basically on an affordable luxury budget. And so I have a whole video coming about that, how you can run a dope ass Benz for like 250 a day, luxury um, five-star hotels for like $150 a day. And everything around how I live more on a daily basis in this episode that I have coming up. And so all those details are gonna be in that video. And so make sure you subscribe, that video's coming up real soon. All in all, this was one of the most fun days of my entire life. <laughs> I enjoyed it from start to finish. It left me feeling inspired. And because there's so many epic things that I wanna do in this world, and they take money. It's like, I have dreams of taking the trips to Antarctica. That shit like 20 grand. There's just so many things that require money. And when I saw people doing amazing things, I was always like, man, that's dope. And how can I do that? So for me, I learned how to specialize in Facebook and Instagram ads, and now we've built one of the biggest you know, personal finance brands in the world. And that's what's enabled me to travel and start to live this life, right? And I always said, why not me, right? They make this car, they make this boat, they make this experience for somebody. Why not for someone who looks like me? I don't want all these, just these other people having fun. And so another thing, in the beginning of the video, I was saying how minimum wage in Bali is $175 a month. And so a life that would actually cost me about sixty dollars to $70,000 a month in Miami cost me about ten dollars to $15,000 a month here in Bali, where I've got a full-time, you know, chef. You know, I've got a personal trainer that comes daily, right? We've got um, house cleaners. We've got pretty much anything that I want is available here. And that's because I'm actually a digital nomad. And so that's one of the beautiful things about the world right now is if you can control where you make your income, there's other places in the world where you can actually live this lifestyle without spending as much money. And so one of the things people are always asking me about is, bro, how do you do this? How do you do that? So I put a link in the description and I've put a bunch of resources. So you'll see a website, you can opt in there. And so I talk about some of the top remote jobs. How do people up their level if they wanna work at Google or you wanna be a digital nomad, be an entrepreneur, or you wanna find out how when they tell me that Airbnb is 18 grand a month and I pay $6,000 a month or Jabro, what's up with the Passport Heavy merch, or so much more. So you're gonna see a link right here, go to this website, and then opt in for the email list, and I'm gonna send you all the important updates, then how to actually connect with other Passport Heavy members, and so much more. And then real quick before I go, one luxury that I do have um, when I'm in Miami, so you might not see him much, but he's always around me, and that's my homie and my bodyguard, Cannon, and also my personal trader, you know, when I'm in the United States. When I'm in the United States, he's pretty much with me, all year long, so he travels with me and my team as we move around. 
And so I want to give him a big shout out so he keeps me safe, you know, fully licensed to carry that thing. People are like, yo, did you always travel with a gun? Hmm. Now you know. Um, but the thing is, when I'm outside of the United States, he is available sometimes, he is busy. And so I just wanna give him that shout out. So if you wanna reach out to him, you're gonna see his info here as well. So yeah, that's one of the luxuries that I do have, especially, you know, traveling around with video equipment and everything. And so all in all, like I said, Man, one of the dopest experiences that I've ever had. I want to give another big shout out to Mark and the squad over at Vomos. And then also the Golden Yacht Charter Crew. I appreciate y'all so much. And then also, I got to give the biggest shout out to the people that are allowing you to watch this video right now. My man, Bandetta Yuri behind the camera. One of the greatest filmmakers around. You might think it's his big crew, but it's really not. It's him with the assistance of maybe one other person. And so he shot and edited this entire video. Shout out to Talia for producing this episode. Shout out to Isaiah for making this custom score. People keep asking for this passport heavy soundtrack. Like I said, we don't have one yet, but it might be coming in the future. If it does drop, I'll, I'll make sure that I send y'all an email. But with all that said, Big shout out to my brother too, Mr. Abnormal Fitness, always bringing that good energy. And last but not least, shout out to the tech queen, Chanel, for rolling around with the boy. I appreciate you so much. Take care, and I hope you live life to the fullest.